Hi, I'm Charles Elihu and I'll be here to discuss ways of improving Shopify's business model with the use of Joe Marketing. Before I begin, I would like to run us down the table of content which um, consists of an overview of what I'll be discussing today, a case study analysis that dives into um, Joe Marketing and a few tools. Uh, I'll be talking about the business models and Joe Marketing digital marketing tools used in the case study, Shopify's business model, a few drawbacks that Shopify has, and improvements and recommendations for these drawbacks. And finally, we're going to end with a conclusion. So for a general overview, this presentation will be focusing on um, analysis of a case study concerning geomarketing marketing in the food retail industry the analysis will dive into how businesses can enhance their operations by leveraging on your marketing strategies, particularly examine the potential improvements that can be done in Shopify's business model with the use of Joe marketing. And the aim of this is just to explore um, the implementation of your marketing techniques to augment how Shopify runs their business and see ways we can actually improve it. So the case study we have before us today is one by Pavel Kita et al. And the title is Geomarketing Marketing as an Important Element of a Food Retailer's Business Model, a Manager Overview. This article examines how Geomarketing Marketing has improved business models for retailers. And this was done through a survey of 244 store managers in Bratislava, which is the capital of Slovakia. It also is located in Central Europe, near the borders of Australia and Hungary. So this study basically made use of cluster analysis and a few GIS tools to segment stores based on their sizes and also their location. So the tools that were used um, reveal that a large retail that large retailers benefit from the use of geo marketing in understanding how their businesses um, operate. So the article approaches guaranteed effective inventory management. It talks about um, enhanced customer experiences that are fostered with strategic decision ma making, and especially during um, economic turndowns. The research also goes deep into talking about the significance of combining geo marketing with other research methods that we're going to be discussing to offer essential insights for retail managers in developing their business models. So before we go deep into the analysis of this case, I would want to talk about a few pointers that were highlighted in the case. First of which is um, a business model. So a business model, according to this article, is considered as the main driving force of any enterprise or any business, regardless of the field of that business. Right. So business models are seen as the essential part of any um, of any organization's performance. Managers here use their business models as a way of structuring their business and knowing how to um, operate these businesses efficiently and much better. A good business model would express the value that an enterprise or a company has to offer. It shows um, a, a good business model also shows how the resources are properly allocated and also focuses on the capabilities that that company has as well as the mechanisms or the management structure that it has in place for company stakeholders who are interested in investing in this company to see. So a business model is basically the backbone of how a business is being operated. Geolocation. In this article, geolocation was used to um, capture geographic data and then to optimize um, the store locations even down to inventory management marketing and marketing and customer convenience 
are all considered when um, when using geolocation. So geolocation is, um, in summary, I would say geolocation is strategic is the using geographical data to know where to position businesses. And in this article, it was mostly focused on positioning these businesses very close to um, the businesses that were close or the businesses that were farther from the city center to see how um, the customers, the behavior of the customers um, are dynamic to these store locations and actually how the managers as well also put that into consideration when they are establishing um, outlets, their retail outlets in various parts of the um, Bratislava. Customer satisfaction. At the core of every business, the aim of running a business, customer satisfaction is the goal, right? So your marketing is a very essential tool that managers use in making sure that customers feel satisfied. I mean, customers are mostly satisfied from like the service and then your location is a very useful tool in bringing this business way closer to customers because customers factor in a lot of things when making purchases or working with businesses. They consider their time, the money they will spend, the effort it will take them to assess products and services. These are all things that customers bear in mind when um, when purchasing or um, using services from a company or an organization. So a few tools that were used to analyze the data in this article, including um, the survey that was done on the 244 store uh, managers, retails, food retail managers. Um, a few others that were mentioned in this article was the geographic information system, also known as the GIS. So the GIS in this article was basically used to visualize and analyze spatial data. Spatial data simply talks about scattered data, which in this situation, in the situation of this article, it's data that was collected from a whole bunch of stores, of retail stores that were scattered across Bratislava. So having to analyze the data from each of this spatial data, because each store has different characteristics, it has different uh, business models, it has um, different ways in which the managers basically operate in trying to make sure that they provide customer satisfaction as much as possible. So all these characteristics are dynamic and GIS is a system that helps in capturing data from all these individual stores and basically the spatial data. Cluster analysis was used to segment these stores into distinct groups. So stores that had similar characteristics were put together in a group called a cluster, right? So those stores that share common characteristics get um, segmented into clusters. I will go further to talk about these clusters and how they were further divided um, in the next slide. Decision three al algorithms. Decision three algorithms basically are sets of um, data that are put in place in order to make decisions based on whatever cluster was made. So in this um, situation here, the classification regression tree, also known as the CRT, was used in, was the algorithm that was used in classifying these stores into different clusters based on their size, based on their location, inventory management, and so on and so forth. It's safe to say that the decision three algorithm is what fosters how these clusters would be made. So clusters are basically made in, in whatever characteristics that um, 
the researchers or the uh, or anyone doing analysis generally um, choose to characterize right so the decision tree algorithm helps in knowing what are the basic features that will sum up to make the characters or the characteristics to make a cluster and lastly um, the Euclidean distance measurement was used to measure the distance between stores themselves, the individual distance between the stores and the distance between each store to the city center. And GIS was also helpful in this to uh, vet the accessibility and spatial distribution of stores. So when clustering or when making decisions to cluster, right? the Euclidean distance measurement system helped to make sure that there was no uneven measurement between each cluster, making sure that these clusters are uh, evenly spaced. Let me put it in, in, in simple words, evenly spaced. Yes. So yeah, that will be the Euclidean distance measurement. So moving on. The clusters in this article were divided into four clusters. The first cluster, which is cluster A, comprised of large stores that were located close to the city center. And cluster B consisted of small stores that were situated a little bit farther from the, from the city center. And those ones were highlighted, as you can see there in pink. They are also close to the city center, but not as compared to the blues. And the blues, which um, the blues, which is cluster A, and the blues, if you can see, they are um widely spread compared to the green, which covers a closer um radius than the blues. Then cluster C, cluster C, which are the green dots on the map, as you can see there, those, um, those stores, uh, were relatively small and they were near to retail outlets, much closer to retail outlets. And then cluster D was made up of medium sized stores. So in general, this analysis revealed that um, stores in cluster A performed exceptionally well in terms of customer satisfaction, particularly in service quality and product variety, which sets a benchmark for clusters. So um, here is a table that shows the, the breakdown of each cluster in service quality, product variety, shopping experience, pricing, and accessibility. And as you can see for cluster A, it has the strength of having high ratings in all the aspects that make this store an ideal for setting a benchmark for best practices and for other clusters. So cluster A is set to be, set to be seen as an ideal. It's like seen as the stereotypical, you know, cluster which you can use to determine other clusters. And cluster B, um, it, as I said, it showed lower satisfaction rates where it was slightly better than uh, cluster C in some of its aspects, um, but um, it still had low ratings though. Cluster C, on the other hand, had total low ratings uh, in product variety and accessibility but it's and it also highlights um areas that needs to be improved to meet customer expectations having the lowest average among all the clusters and cluster d has high accessibility and product variety ratings which suggests that um these stores basically effectively cater to diverse customer needs so having a round of a, a, a balanced number um i believe the only the only criteria where cluster d was lower 
than any of the clusters was in pricing. So let's talk about Shopify and how this article relates to the tools, the systems and um, resources that were used in this article to understand Shopify's business model and see ways we can improve or implement geomarketing. Shopify is an e-commerce platform that allows businesses to create their online stores. It provides tools for website building, product management, payments, tracking of orders, and so on and so forth. So Shopify has long been supporting entrepreneurs to make sales without needing um, physical stores. And this is possible through integration with fulfillment centers, drop shipping, print on demand services. So entrepreneurs run their business on Shopify, knowing that they have an all in one platform that is able to provide them with all the necessary tools they need in establishing their business and eliminating the need of having a physical store is a very huge advantage for entrepreneurs. Um, a few of the missions of uh, Shopify is to ent empower entrepreneurs to help entrepreneurs to be able to reach um, more customers globally to optimize operations to make them way easier and to be streamlined down from creation process to distribution to payments and follow-up and tracking shopify has a system that has all of this inclusive in it and finally customer experience which again is the goal of every organization. Happy customers are customers that are going to come back. Shopify services. The major services that Shopify offers, the online store builder, which is used to create and customize online stores with templates, teams, tools, and other resources. Having a website as a business is very crucial because it shows um, credibility and it also provides an avenue for customers to be able to understand the nature of that business. Inventory management. It's easy to track, store, manage different inventory and to ensure efficient operations. The payment processing by Shopify. Shopify has um, partnered with so many pl um, payment platforms that make it easy for payments to be done in whatever uh, currency you, uh, customers choose to pay. Shopify has streamlined this process in making it easy for customers to be able to make payments to any platform or any service they are making purchase from. Purchase fulfillment with the integration of various third party services, Shopify has been able to streamline and make order fulfillment very easy and very possible for customers. Shopify leverages on geolocation to tailor customer interactions, which provides a more personalized shopping experience. This includes dip displaying localized content, converting currencies based on customer's location, and even calculating dynamic shipping rates and so forth. Shopify is highlighted as a leader in the e-commerce industry, powering over 28.51% of all e-commerce websites in the US. This dominance is a testament to its robust features and competitive edge over platforms like WooCommerce, Wix, and Squarespace. A few benefits of this, a few benefits of Joe Marketing, of how Joe Marketing has been able to streamline um, Shopify's business model and giving them a competitive edge over e other e-commerce platforms 
uh, first of all will be localized content. So your marketing allows Shopify to tailor the content displayed on their platform according to users geographic location. This means that customers see products, promotions and information that are relevant to their region. For example, if a customer is in the UK, you might see uh, the customer might see different product recommendations compared to a customer that is in Canada. So these levels of personalization enhances the shopping experiences because no customer will want to be seeing services that are not available to them in their location, right? Secondly will be um, dynamic shipping rates. So in calculating shipping rates um, based on customer's location, um, the system would have to ensure that the rates are accurate and transparent and Shopify has been able to accomplish this with um, geomarketing. So this eliminates the surpasses at checkouts, which can lead to um, your cart being um, abandoned. For example, if a, if a customer in a rural area, um, a customer in a rural area might have different shopping co shipping costs compared to a customer that is in an urban area. So all those dynamic shipping rates are considered based on your marketing. By analyzing sales data based on geographic information, Shopify has been able to help merchants understand where their products are selling the most and where uh, there is untapped potential. So having a geographic sales analytics can show entrepreneurs, okay, these are available spots that you can harness um, sales where you there is potential for sales and they are clients that are demanding or making requests from this order from this location so it helps uh business owners to be able to know strategic locations to go open uh, stores do you get their online stores to start to deliver to clients potential clients that are there in currency conversion automatic currency conversion is um is available with Shopify. When prices are displayed in a customer's local currency, it reduces the friction in, in the buying process. So customers don't have to necessarily worry about exchange rates or calculating costs in their own currency, um, which now makes it likely for them to not make that purchase. So the feature built into Shopify makes it easy for your did your marketing feature in shopify makes it easy for people to be able to easily convert to their local currency using ip geolocation shopify can verify a customer's location and match billing addresses or uh, this would also help um fraudulent um, transactions protecting both um, the merchant and IP geolocation. Using IP geolocation, Shopify can verify the customer's location and be sure that it matches the billing address. This helps for preventing fraudulent transactions. It protects both the merchant and the customer. For example, if a purchase is attempted from a location that does not match the billing address, it can trigger additional verification steps to ensure that the, like, the transaction is legitimate. Your marketing has also allowed for targeted marketing campaigns that are tailored to specific regions. So this has also this has ensured that marketing efforts are relevant to the audience's cultural and regional preferences. It's increased the effectiveness of the campaign. For instance, if a summer sale campaign is like targeted to country, countries experiencing summer, rather than having like a one fits all. For countries that don't experience much of summer, there is no need for having ad, um, targeted ads towards um, a country that is mostly cold in, in all times of the year, or all seasons of the year. Or it helps in also knowing that in targeting the campaigns of knowing the time or the window in which those campaigns should hold and when there's change in seasons, those campaigns will probably have to change to something different. 
so for seamless operation, um, Shopify has been able to integrate a POS system with your marketing, which ensures that the inventory and sales data are synchronized al across all their channels. So it makes um, online and offline sales accounted for in real time and provides accurate inventory levels that are unified. For example, if a customer um, a customer can order from a, a product a product online and choose to pick it from a nearby store where they have um, stock available there. So which leads to store pickup locations where your location helps customers to find the nearest stores and offer pickup locations in case they choose to do that. Localized content have also been offered can also be offered at checkouts and um, localized in terms of the language, um, currency and payments methods makes international customers feel more included in the system. For instance, if you're providing um, payment options that are popular within um, a, a customer region, for example, um, Alipay in China or PayPal, which is quite popular in Europe, it increases the likelihood of sales for business owners. How are things at Shopify? I'll be running down through a few challenges that Shopify has experienced over the co past couple years and we will discuss how your marketing will be able to mitigate these problems and most likely find some recommendations to how to solve these problems that Shopify is experiencing. So Shopify has faced um, data privacy issue with a recent post, which is one month ago, which by eSecurity Planet, which states that Shopify actually blames a compromised third party app for data leaks that were experienced. So data breaches have resulted to situations where sensitive customer information like their names, addresses, and even card numbers have been assessed by unauthorized individuals. Um, situations where Shopify did not fully scrutinize third-party apps before incorporating them into their systems and ensuring they comply with uh, data protection laws like the GDPR and CCPA. And most companies tend to ignore some of these regulations because they can be robust and very expensive as well to set up. Secondly, we'll be looking at user friendliness of Shopify. So compared to systems like WordPress, most clients of Shopify have complained about Shopify's blogging tools being very basic and limiting um the limiting their workflow right so this has hindered their business and they can't rely heavily on their content making to engage their audience with regular updates on blog posts there have also been some concerns about customer service um support um inconsistencies a uh, recent uh, post in April from Trustpilot is a client complaining about how Shopify's platform used to be user-friendly, but now um, there are much more better systems that have been able to make designs for um, businesses much easier compared to how Shopify currently is. Lastly will be data management. Shopify has faced a few challenges in inventory synchronization, bulk data imports, um, data privacy as we have mentioned earlier, and even ERP integration, which would require a robust solution. All right. Another um, screenshot from a concerned customer who says um, Shopify used to be wish to be probably decent and now they have zero responsibility for any of their shortcomings and this has to do with the systems being slow most of the time 
So managing inventory between online and physical stores, of course, can be challenging. And depending on um, the stock levels, bulk data imports, importing large files and large amounts of um, products, of data products via CSV files can actually be time consuming. And that is the basic format for file file transmission so alternatives need to be addressed in that situation and finally your marketing meets shopify so we're going to be discussing how your marketing and your location can help with data privacy data management and user friendliness of tools for shopify Starting off with data privacy would be to ensure and enhance data security measures. Robust geomarketing tools can monitor and protect sensitive customer data by providing detailed insights into data access patterns and potential vulnerabilities as well. For example, if Shopify can use um, your marketing tools to track who is assessing customer information when and from where and then they can identify any unusual or unauthorized access attempt it can preemptively address potential security threats and even prompt the users next we'll be talking about transparency and compliance Using your marketing to track data flows would help to ensure that they comply with data protection regulations so that GDPR in Europe and CCPA in California. So by monitoring where and how data is moving, companies can ensure that they meet with these regulatory requirements and also help with third party integrations to, to know what um, third party apps to integrate with their systems. Integration should be done with third-party apps that have similar or um, same um, information flow with Shopify. So with this, they can actually enhance uh, uh, personalized security notifications and transparency of data practices, which will help them to build and maintain customer trust. So in relation to this article, to the article we, um, we discussed earlier, the article actually describes how geomarketing tools can be used to analyze sales data based on geographic information. And the same capability can be extended here to Shopify. It also, the article also talks about using geomarketing to optimize operations and decision-making um, processes which is something that also would be applied in this situation. So talking about user-friendly tools, the first step will be to enhance customization. By utilizing your marketing tools like cartographic data, visualization can offer more interpretative research tools for market analysis. So this will help them in creating more tailored and user-friendly interfaces by understanding geographic references and behaviors. So they can also develop interfaces that cater specifically to regional uh, needs. For instance, now if data shows that customers in a particular region prefer a certain layout or color scheme, Shopify can customize the website design for users that are in that area to kind of enhance their shopping experience optimization of content with um, url um, structures by improving seo strategies your marketing can also help in optimizing in optimizing the content by understanding local search trends and customer behaviors so shopify can identify popular keywords and phrases used in specific regions that can optimize um, content and urls ensuring that their stores can rank high in local search results and then this targeted seo approach will drive more organic traffic than than um 
than false traffic to their stores. Consistent customer support has to continue. By using geo, geo, geo marketing data, um, Shopify can predict um, and address regional customer issues, which will allow them to have a proactive customer support. So instantaneous responses to whatever concerns that their clients, customers may have. And if customers in a particular area frequently encounter issues with delivery times, Shopify can actually provide targeted solutions such as um, individual shipping options or local service representatives that can are uh, always available to address problems for customers. And in relation to this the article we um we looked at the article talks about how geo marketing tools can be used for deeper insight into market preferences and this is something that shopify too can harness the article also focuses on using geo marketing to optimize operations that can be extended to customer support by predicting and addressing regional issues that are within um that are within like that region so the emphasis on local search trends and behaviors in the article aligns with uh improved seo strategies discussed so we 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 optimize we optimize content we optimize um uh, url data just so that people in the geographic location where the businesses are targeted or where the businesses are situated are able to get access to content Lastly will be data management. And on data management, uh, the solutions here would be to optimize GIS and then integrate ERP. So using geolocation and GIS tools can optimize how inventory distribution is, uh, is being done by providing real-time tracking and understanding um, regional patterns as well. Shopify can use GIS to monitor inventory levels at different regions so that they ensure that popular products are always in stock and then they are most needed. For instance, if a product is selling quickly in, in a particular region or in um, a particular um, state or country, Shopify can allocate more stock to that area in real time, preventing um, stockouts and also meeting customer demands as effectively as possible. For ERP integrations, I would recommend um, integrating a cloud-based ERP system for Shopify because now Shopify will be able to streamline their inventory management and order processing all on the cloud. So choosing an ERP with OpenAI should allow for easier integration and for the fact that the GIS system is online and having a cloud-based storage which is online if there is a sudden surge in demand, if there is a sudden surge in demand, a sudden surge in demand is detected in one region, the ERP system can immediately adjust um, procurement and distribution plans to ensure that um, timely delivery is um, ensured. And in relation to our article as well, the article talked about how geomarketing tools have been used to analyze sales based on geographic information and Shopify can use these insights to like manage stocks, stock levels, the, um, the efficiency of these stock levels to across all their various locations, all various locations of business owners of Shopify. And lastly, by choosing an ERP system with API, um, the article also emphasizes on how um, using geomarketing can um, help with inventory management and integrating GIS tools into this can help in making data driven decisions quickly and accurately. So it would enhance the overall operational efficiency of Shopify. So to summarize, um, the few points that were mentioned, 
were on enhancing data privacy and increasing the user friendliness of the tools on Shopify's platform. And lastly, data management, robust security measures and compliance tracking has to be implemented to enhance data privacy and reduce um, data breach secure third-party app integrations and also building customer trust with co um, personalized security notifications to let customers know if there is any suspicious activity going on enhancing customization through cartographic data visualization um, consistent customer support by predicting regional issues and improved SEO strategies by optimizing content and URL structures so it's easier for clients, new and existing clients, to be able to find services they are looking for on Shopify when they search for it. Data management in optimizing inventory distribution using GIS and real-time tracking, and then also having an efficient ERP integration with cloud-based systems and an open API. So thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Have a lovely day.